morning. It's Jackie. I'm upstairs at Westcote Bell Pottery. And uh, over the holidays, Vaughn threw me some earthenware mugs. They're the red clay. And he coated them with white slip. You can see that on the handles there. And uh, I painted three or four of them with a sort of blackbird crow motif and filmed it. So I'll show you how that was done coming up next. These are the underglazes I use. There are Duncan, Spectrum, let's see, I think there are some Mako here, quite a selection, they all they all work together. And it has been coated with white slip. There we go. I, um, I use a regular type painting palette in order to mix my underglaze colors just as if I were painting. And over here I have bird stencils that I've cut out of uh, newsprint phone book newsprint. And these are going to be the stencils that go down on the mug. They're going to be black birds, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, paint the areas of the where the stencil is going to go with black underglaze. <clears throat> And just to give the black a bit of life, need my brush out here. I'm going to layer in some of the spectrum blue. So it will be more of a blue black. I'll just let that set up a bit before I put on <clears throat> the first stencil. First I'm going to spray the stencil. So that it's wet. soft and then I'm going to lay it right in here. It's going to kind of go under the handle, the tail. Make sure it's all flat, no wrinkles because the water does stretch the paper a bit. And then, for the same bluey black, I'm going to seal the edges. And I like to paint away. I'm sealing the edge I'm painting away. Um, this is just a way of making sure that too much color doesn't get pushed up underneath the, the stencil. Later, I'm going to coat this whole mug with other colors. The second crow is a tight fit. I'm 
again <clears throat> to seal that stencil on. I kind of like the fact that they're both big. They'll look like they're interacting. Once this black dries, I'm going to completely coat this again with underglazes in varying colors so that the birds will have um, a background of foliage and trees. Now that the black is set up, I'm going to put a layer of color. I'm going to start with white underglaze because white underglaze is actually quite opaque and I will need it to um, cover up the black that isn't um, protected by stencils. In other words, that will become the landscape background behind the crow shapes. If any of this white gets behind my stencil, you know, if my stencil leaks, I'll just have to make some corrections. It should be okay. So I'm just going to let that white set up. It only takes a minute. Next, I'm going to block in what will turn out to be the background to the two birds, the two black birds. And I'm going to block in areas of color all around the mug. And at this part of the process, I just like to have fun and use colors. Maybe I'll choose a color theme like mostly greens or mostly warm colors. Um, and then after I remove the stencils, I'll figure out how I'm going to deal with the color blocks when I have a look at what they suggest to me. So it's has an element of surprise and an element of fun to working out each step. I've used some greens here, but I think I'm going to add a bit of lavender as well. I'm adding these color blocks, as you can see, with just a bit of sponge. And if I want to do just a small area, I just use a, you know, I cut the sponge down and into, this is if I want to get into a narrow shape. I think I'm also going to add some red. But sometimes I like to think like maybe I will do a piece that kind of feels like spring or winter or early morning or dusk or sunset. And you can choose different colorways. Sometimes I leave a little of the previous color on the sponge just to get a, a different mix. I'm 
This is a darker purple. So I want to make sure that I have contrast too. So the birds are black, so I want to use a lot of lighter colors, especially in the areas that will probably touch the black birds. Again, I'm using my palette down here to mix colors. Okay, so the entire mug has a kind of patchwork of blocked colors. I added a lot of yellow because I want to make sure that I have contrast with the black crows that will be um, in the foreground. Another thing I like to do is take a brush, this is sometimes called a stencil brush or a deer foot, and just um, kind of spatter some color into some of the areas so that they aren't like a flat like there. That's not just a flat yellow, but has some flecks of green in it. Um, sometimes even doing a color that is quite contrasty, like this blue into a green area and maybe a little bit of blue into the yellow and into the red. I don't want to overdo it, but it's kind of makes um, the colors have another richness to, to them. That was a bit of a Indian summer color. And just a few flecks of that somewhere. So it gives the it gives the colors a lot of variation instead of being totally flat. So now I'll just let this set up for a bit before I take the stencils off. I don't want to do it when it's too wet because I'll, I'll risk um, making marks that I don't want in the wet underglazes. Okay, so these are pretty much set up. The underglazes that I put around and over the crow stencils, the big black bird stencils, is pretty much set up. And so I'm going to find a nice edge to uh, pick the stencil up. And I think I'm going to try right here. There's the tail of this one crow, and I think it will be a nice edge of the stencil to get hold of. Here we go. not getting the whole stencil off. That happens quite a lot. The stencil itself is still soft from being sprayed, so that's why it's um, kind of coming off in pieces, but that's okay. bottom half of the tail here. I'm actually lifting up part of the uh, tail of the other bird, so I'm going to get hold of that one too. These two birds were a nice tight fit on this um, on this mug, but I think that will be a fun image to play with because they look like they're interacting.
Here we go. So both stencils are off. And my next step is to put detail into the background colors that I've made for myself. Right here, there's a little bit of white on the black crow, so I'll just make a correction there with some black underglaze. Anywhere where there's a leak, I'll um, correct those first. So I work around the, the mug, adding things that will look like trees behind the birds. And um, and flower shapes that will be in front of the birds. And um, I put down some of the shapes and then move to see what I've got elsewhere. I don't want one side to, one part of the mug to be really busy and another part to look like um, it got left out. So I work over the whole thing at once. I'm going to use different brushes to make different marks. This is a fuller brush than the one I've been using for the lines. Sometimes just dotting in some color, just kind of contrasting color makes the, makes an area look more rich, more active. Okay, so adding more detail, making sure I get kind of a nice, um, contrast and also um, using warm and cool colors, some big shapes, some small. Going around the mug, adding flowers. Let's see. also added this little dot pattern that continues around the mug. It, it stops and starts, but it kind of gives the feeling of a path um, going around the mug, these sort of um, reddish dots over the yellow. So the, there's a kind of continuity to the image. Uh, 
right there. And maybe some more yellow over here. I like the way the yellow warms it up and makes it feel like light is breaking through. Okay, so this mug is ready to be bisque fired. Sometimes I like to add some dots along the edges of the stencil to kind of activate the area and maybe even create a feeling like there's maybe a path back here through the, the foliage. path, a space that is in front of the birds and leading behind. So the, the detail gives a sense of a space that has some depth overlap in the size of the patterns. Gives the uh, image a, a feeling of depth. Large shapes versus small, some shapes overlapping, some mark small, some large, etc. I think I will put right in this area here a little bit of a, a moon shape. In the distance. go into some of these with some more detail, these round blue flower shapes. <laughs> 